Hello guys. Welcome to Anime Sum Up. Today's anime is about a medieval world, where powerful mechs called Silhouette Knights are used to fight horrific demonic beasts. So without any further delay, let's start. Subasa Karada, a company programmer and a mecha model fan, is killed in a car accident. Subasa is reincarnated as a young boy named Ernesti, Eru Echevalier in the Fremvilla Kingdom in a world where magic exists, after witnessing his father Matthias defeating a demon beast in a mech called Silhouette Knight, Eru is motivated to be a Silhouette Knight pilot, Knight Runner, so that he too can ride one as well. During his magic training which he excels, he befriends the twins, Adeltrud, Addy, and Arkid, Kid Older and also teaches them his magic skills. When the trio finally enrolled at Lihiala Academy, directed by Eru's grandfather, Eru learns he cannot pilot a Silhouette Knight as he is too young and short, but is allowed to skip to middle school classes, after impressing his teachers with his power, thanks to his gunblade magic rod to compensate a magic rod's short-range abilities. As Eru becomes 12 years old, he joins a class training trip between the middle and high school students, at Cloquet Forest and meets Stefania Serati, the older's older half-sister, who the siblings share a complicated relationship since Addy and Kid are illegitimate children. Later that night, the class camp is attacked by a swarm of demon beasts which Eru, Addy, and Kid rescue Stefania and the rest of the students with help of their high school seniors riding silhouette knights. Elsewhere, a surviving silhouette knight battles a giant demon beast tortoise. Behemoth. The giant demon beast tortoise, attacks the gates of Cloquet Forest, where the guards die fighting it as one runs to the capital, to request the knights for help. Back at the students' camp, Eru realizes something big must have scared the demon beasts into going to their camp, and witness the behemoth appearing. As the students evacuate, the senior student silhouette knights led by Edgar C., Blanche, Helvi Obery and Dietrich Nitz fight and distract the behemoth. After seeing one of his comrades killed by the behemoth's fire breath, Dietrich runs away in fear, which Eru follows him, knocks him out and steal his Guer silhouette knight. After improvising the Gare's controls and improving its movements using his magic and programming, Eru rides the Guer into battle and rescuing his seniors by stabbing the behemoth's left eye with a sword, Despite help from the kingdom's silhouette knights, the behemoth is too strong due to its thick armor and fire breath. In order to defeat it, Eru jumps onto the behemoth's head and casts lighting into its wounded eye, which transmit to its brain killing it. At sunrise, the surviving knight runners are shocked to discover Gare's pilot was not Dietrich but Eru. Having fun experienced riding a silhouette knight, Eru tells his friends that he plans to make a custom silhouette knight for himself. Meanwhile, the king of Fremvilla takes an interest with Eru due to his deeds. Eru is summoned by the king who wants to reward him any prize for defeating the behemoth. Much to the court and his grandfather's shock, Eru asks for the classified schematics of an ether reactor, the heart of a silhouette knight. When Eru explains he wants to make his dream silhouette knight and ride it as his hobby, the king is amused with his answer, and agrees to Eru's request if he can build an improved silhouette knight first. One of the king's advisors, Marquis Saladi, Stefania, Adi and Kid's father, tells his children to report to him if Eru is successful so he may inform the king. Meanwhile, Eru explains his plan to improve a silhouette knight's performance to his dwarf friend Batson, and his senior and silhouette knight engineer David, who is impressed with Eru's idea, using Helvi's Trandorcus as a testbed. Eru and the dwarven engineers improves the Trandorcus strength by 30% using stranded crystal tissues, and adds two sidearms armed with magic rods behind its back so the Silhouette Knight can fight close range and cast spells at the same time. In the meantime, Eru and Batson also built Silhouette Gears, human-sized mech suits so that Addy and Kid can learn how to operate Silhouette Knights. With the improvements done, the Trandorcus, now renamed Telestale, performs well in its first test run. Later, Helvi's Telestale battles Edgar's Earl Cumber in a mock match, and almost win before the Telestale mana runs out. Later that night, the engineers celebrate the Telestale's success and Eru thinks of more Silhouette Knight ideas, unaware that another group is spying on their work. While Eru and the engineers try to find a way to fix the Telestale's high mana consumption, Eru also builds weapons for the Silhouette Gears including an automatic crossbow. Addy and Kid reports to their father about the Telestale's performance, which he in turn informs Marquis Dixgard, under Marquis Dixgard orders. The Order of the Scarlet Rabbit has three Telestale Silhouette Knight brought to Fort Cassidesis where the Marquis will inspect and test the knights personally. During the journey, the Scarlet Rabbit convoy is ambushed by a Shaker Worm Demon Beast which Edgar, Helvi and Dietrich in their Telestales are able to defeat it, which impresses Knight Commander Fredholm of the Scarlet Rabbits. Unaware by everyone, the ambush was set up by order of the Bronze Fang, 
the spies who have been observing Eru's work, at Fort Cassidesis, Marquis Dixgard, who dislikes Eru for breaking the status quo on night design, meets Eru personally, after telling Eru that he will be reporting all new silhouette night design to the king. The Marquis is flabbergasted that Eru doesn't mind nor is he interested with fame or riches, since he wants to make newer and better silhouette knight and eventually relents, as Eru's friends head to Fort Cassidesis to get him. The Order of the Bronze Fang causes a demon beast attack at a nearby village, to lure out the Order of the Scarlet Rabbit so they can attack Fort Cassidesis. Edgar and Dietrich accompany Batson, David, Kid and Addy in their silhouette knights to Fort Cassidesis. Meanwhile, Lady Kerhilt and the Bronze Fang Knights manage to sneak into Fort Cassidesis, and hijack the fort's silhouette knights including the three Telestales, despite Commander Fredholm and the Scarlet Rabbit Knights attempts to stop them. Lady Kerhilt and two of her subordinates escape the fort with two of the Telestales, however, the Bronze Fang Knights encounter Edgar and Dietrich on the way which the latter two tries to stop them with Kid and Addy helping in their silhouette gears. Upon learning from Batson and David on what happened to the stolen Telestales, Eru dons a silhouette gear and helps Commander Fredholm defeat the intruders in the fort. Elsewhere, Dietrich, Kid and Addy manages to defeat Lady Kerhilt's subordinates, while she herself defeats Edgar and escapes to Vendabadala. Dietrich tries to follow her but he and the others are surrounded by demon beasts until Eru and Commander Fredholm arrives to help them. The next morning, Marquis Dixgard is shocked to discover the intruders that attacked the fort, and stole the Telestale were using Cursed Bait, a forbidden concoction that attracts demon beasts and turns them crazy and concludes this was the work of another nation. Days later, Eru and his friends are thanked by King Ambrosius for their work, who also creates a new order of knights called the Order of the Silver Phoenix, led by Eru to research and create better silhouette knights, a recovering Edgar promises Helvi, that he will retrieve the stolen Telestale as it was actually her silhouette knight. As a Telestale is sent to the Silhouette Knight Laboratory, the Fremvilla Kingdom Top Research Lab, whose directors hope to reverse engineer it, and make their own mass-produced silhouette knights to impress King Ambrosius. Eru and the Order of the Silver Phoenix begin their work on creating newer and improved silhouette knights with help from Marquis Dixgard, who delivers two silhouette knight companies of Kaldatoas as base models, and Nora Freikberg and the Order of the Azure Hawk capturing the spies, who help the Bronze Fang knights and prevent any more leaks of information from the Academy. Eru creates silhouette gears for the knightsmiths to ease their workload, and new silhouette knight designs and improvements to be added, However, David criticizes Eru for being too focused in his work, when his test of using rockets on a silhouette knight almost gets him killed. After creating a two-seater cockpit for Addy and Kid, a silhouette knight shaped like a centaur and magical daggers, uses his keys to start a silhouette knight to prevent another hijacking attempt. Eru in the Order of the Silver Phoenix heads to the capital, to face against the silhouette knight laboratory's Kaldato Adarsh models in front of King Ambrosius and his ministers. The match between the Order of Silver Phoenix and the laboratory team ends in a draw, as with the new unit's increased power they reached a stalemate against units less advanced, but with more experienced pilots. Some time later, Eru and his friends graduate from Lyhiala, and move with the rest of the Order to Fort Oribesius to dedicate themselves to silhouette knight development, and King Ambrosius decides to retire and leave the kingdom to his son Leotimus. He then approaches Eru and asks him to develop new exclusive silhouette knights for him, and his grandson Prince Emrys. The Order then produces two units with the same capabilities, one colored silver Jilbariga, and the other colored gold Goldleo. When both decide to choose Goldleo, Ambrosius and Emrys decide to settle it with a duel, with Emrys claiming the victory and Ambrosius accepting Jilbariga. Eru soon realizes that Ambrosius was actually testing his grandson's skills. When a large group of shell-cased beasts head for Alfheim, the city where the Aether Reactors are developed and home of the Alves, the Order of Silver Phoenix is dispatched to help defend it, along with Ambrosius and Emrys, with the power of the new units. Eru and Ko easily defeat the attackers, with Eru killing the shell-cased queen by himself. After the battle, Ambrosius finally accepts Eru's request to let him learn the secret of how Aether Reactors are created, and takes him to Alfheim, where he is granted permission from the Great Elder Kitli, the leader of the Alves, he then spends three months there to learn the process and returns with Ambrosius's permission, to use the catalysts of the behemoth, and the shell-cased queen he killed to create a custom ether reactor, and use it to complete his own personal silhouette knight Akaruga. The Zalaudic kingdom starts a war to conquer the entire western continent, using their newest models of silhouette knights and transport airships, the forces of Zalaudic easily bypass the defenses of the kingdom of Kushipurcha, with defeat inevitable. 
The king requests a duel with the commander of the Zalaudic forces, Prince Cristobal. To buy enough time for his daughter Princess Eleonora to escape, the king loses and is killed, but Eleonora ends up captured by the enemy forces, along with her aunt Martina and cousin Isidola, who are also King Leodimus's sister and niece respectively. In response, Leodimus sends the Order of Silver Phoenix along with Emerus to investigate the situation, and after easily defeating the enemies guarding the border, they discover that their silhouette knights have the same technology as the Telestale stolen from Fort Cassidesis, concluding that the thieves were tied with Zalaudic. Upon hearing that Eleonora is being forced to marry Cristobal, Eru and co. start making plans to rescue her, but news about their presence reach Cristobal, who sends Gustav Marduns to track them down. Upon meeting Eru's party, Gustav attacks them, but when they prove themselves too strong for him, he retreats, assisted by Lady Kerhilt. Using special silhouette gears, the Order of Silver Phoenix successfully rescue Eleonora, Martina and Isidola. Cristobal sends a party to chase after them, but their pursuers are easily defeated by Eru's Akaruga and forced to flee, once reaching safety. Eru's party establishes a base at Nishiri, and agree to provide the remaining Kushapurchin forces with upgrades to their silhouette knights, in exchange for the scraps of all enemy units defeated by them. With these new upgrades, the Kushapurchin easily fend off an enemy attack on the city, and Lady Kerhilt is ordered to launch a surprise attack on the Silver Phoenix's base to recapture the princess, in exchange of having her family's name restored. However, Eru and his friends were prepared and easily defeat and capture the Bronze Fang Knights, with Lady Kerhilt killed in a battle against Edgar. Cristobal leads a large force of silhouette knights and airships to crush the Kushapurchin forces at their stronghold and capture Eleonora. However, he falls into a trap made by the Order of Silver Phoenix who now possess javelin missiles to take down their airships, with his forces routed due to the Silver Phoenix's superior silhouette knights, Cristobal's airship tries to escape only to be confronted by the Akaruga. Eru easily defeats Cristobal in battle which the latter tries to bribe Eru to join his side, but when Eru admits of no interest in nobility, Cristobal falls to his death rather than suffer humiliation of being captured, demoralizing his forces and making them retreat. Eleonora becomes queen of Kushapurchin and declares the rebirth of their nation. As the combined Silver Phoenix and Kushapurchin forces retake their lands, Horatio Gojas, Zalaudic's top scientist, promises Princess Catalina that he will build a new weapon to avenge her brother's death. Months later, the Silver Phoenix and Kushapurchin forces finally retake a fortress held by Zalaudic, but Horatio's new weapon, a giant airship shaped like a drake attacks them. The Viver. Zalaudic's newest weapon, battles the Akaruga, whose captain Doloteo Mardonis wants to avenge Cristobal's death. Meanwhile, a Zalaudic force led by Doloteo's son, Gustavo, battles Dietrich and his men, but Gustavo is forced to abandon his silhouette knight after Dietrich tricks him into exhausting his mana supply. Eru is unable to take down the Viver due to its defenses, and is forced to land the Akaruga after the Viver's chaff smoke damages its jet engines. The Viver is forced to withdraw after exhausting its mana trying to destroy the Akaruga. As Eru and his allies withdraw, Horatio repairs and installs a bigger ether reactor in the Viver to give it more power, and Gustavo receives the Zalaudic's royal family silhouette knight, Alkalorix by Princess Catalina. Meanwhile, after discussing their battle plans, the Silver Phoenix and Kushapurchins agree to Eleonora's strategy, where she will lead the entire Kushapurchin army to recapture their capital Delvancool. While Eru and the Silver Phoenix knights battle the Viver, as the Kushapurchins fight the Zalaudix at the last fortress that leads to Delvancool. The Viver arrives, with Horatio on board, to attack Eleonora's position only to discover Eru has repaired and improved a captured airship to fight them. After drawing the Viver away from the battlefield, Eru's party launches an attack with javelin missiles loaded with oil that once ignited, surrounds the enemy ship in flames, in response. Doloteo activates the Viver's Dragonblood reactor, that surrounds it with a massive energy shield, Meanwhile, on land, an infiltration party hijacks the drawbridge controls, allowing the Kushapurchin forces to invade, while Gustavo is defeated by Edgar with Emrys' help. Back to the sky. Eru breaks through the Viver's energy shield and attacks it directly defeating it, in a last effort. Doloteo takes control of the Viver and attempts to ram it on the Kushapurchin base camp to kill Eleonora. But Eru and Kid stop him, taking down the Viver for good. After the battle, the Kushapurchin forces take control of Delvancool and Catalina poisons herself to death to avoid capture, thus ending the war with Zalaudic's defeat, and Eleonora recognized as Kushapurch's de facto ruler. Once returning home, Eru is watched by far from Horatio, who
who survived the Viver's destruction, and departs to look for another country to sell his services to, longing to face Eru in battle again. Back to Flemvilla, Ambrosius commends the Order of Silver Knights for their efforts, and awards Eru with his own laboratory, while the airship's technology is spread along the neighboring countries, ushering a new era of trade and transportation across the continent. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to like, subscribe and press the bell icon so you don't miss the updates.